Anything else from that quiz or yeah, yes? Twenty. So. All right, so there's a couple levels to this. If I said, can you tell me, if, I, if, if something weighed 100 pounds, but you didn't know that, and I'm like, I'll give you five bucks, if you can guess the weight of this thing to within five pounds, within five pounds. So the real weight, come to find out, is 100. How, what is the most you could guess and still get $5? I said, I'd give you five bucks if you were within five pounds. Yeah, the lowest is 95 and the highest is 105, right? Within means both ways, right? We just, we know this in English, but sometimes you translate it to math and it gets lost. So you have to go two directions for this. Uh, so I've been asking this question about what percent is within one standard deviation. I've asked that question over and over and over, trying to see how many times uh, it takes until my students go crazy. Some of the people are not here. Maybe I made them crazy, but not a high enough percentage. I'm going to keep asking that question. Uh, but do you see how that's related to the min and max usual value question? Min and max usual value is very specific. I have to go out two steps for that. I keep asking this question because a lot of the ones I just make up, they're very small. So almost all of them are going to have 100% in two steps. And then that gets a little bit boring. So I just always ask what's within one standard deviation because we also know empirically it should be about 68% if it was normal. So it's kind of like comparing it to theory and seeing if it's normal or not in that way. Okay. So if my mean was 9 and my standard deviation is 2, put 9 in the middle, go up one step, that's going to be 11. Go down one step, it's going to be 7. And I can just see what numbers are between 7 and 11. That's it. And then just add those percentages up. So thankfully, not a lot of people did like two out of five or something. Because if I catch, so if, I, if my chart looked like this, uh, what you got, Chuck? Six, eight, nine, uh, 12. Which numbers did I catch in here? Which data values did I catch in here? Did I catch the sixes? No, hell no. What did I catch? Eight. Eights and nines. So, but that's not two out of four. That doesn't make any sense. By catching the eights, I already caught what percentage of the data? 30%. And I caught the nines. So what total percentage? 70. Kick ass. Because it's not just one eight. 30% of my data is eights. So I didn't catch one out of four things. I caught 30% of all the things. So when it's given to me like this, I've got to look at it a little differently. It's not one big ass list I can just count and divide. I can't do that, it's already kind of been done for me. That's why I just add up the percent. So there's a few different levels of skills that you have to put together to answer that question. Maybe. Anything else from that quiz? Man, I can really get to it on a Monday, make you all depressed quick. Really hone that ability over time. <laughs> so again, you can make corrections to this quiz, of course. It's due by tomorrow if you want as many points back as you can get. Is it like 50% No, let's do it again. If you got an 80 or above, you can get five points up to 100, max. If you do all the corrections, get them all right. So if you got an 82, you get up to an 87. If you got a 97, you get up to 100. The only way you go over 100 is to answer bonus questions or something. If you get below an 80, let's say you got a 68. How many points did you miss? 32 divided by 4 is 8. You could get 8 points back. So you get a point for every 4 points you missed. If you get below an 80, if you do all the corrections, get them all right. Do you see how 80? How many points did I miss if I got an 80? 20 divided by 4 is... 
five. Do you see how it matches? So I made 80 is kind of like where I said, if you get below an 80, you should get some more points back because you're doing more work on the corrections. That's why I kind of may make it a sliding scale, but above 80, five max. So if you don't like that, it's, it's well, anyway, it's sort of like taxes. You want to pay less taxes, make less money. It's that simple. Okay. <laughs> yes. When you, I'm sorry, do it again. Oh yeah, when you take the test, yeah, you can you can use, uh, you can like the final exam. You're going to bring all your formula sheets with you. Not the ones you lost points on. Maybe rewrite those. If anybody did lose points on a formula sheet, don't don't use. I love it. Somebody, some student, just use the same one again with all the same. I'm like, well, that's easy. I've already got the minus stuff on there. Just do it again. Doesn't make any sense. Makes my job easy, but that's kind of stupid. Don't do that. Is everybody all right? You guys all right? I worry about you guys. I do. I worry about me too. But hey, we all signed up for it. Okay, anything else left over? Anything from homework or anything else from the quiz? <laughs> yeah, part of what we'll talk about today, once we get finished with Chapter 8, we'll turn into review mode. And the first thing we'll do is everything you'll have on the formula sheet for this test. You can bring in the old formula sheets if you want to, but sometimes they just sort of mess people up. Like, you're not going to need the probability formulas, P of A or B on this. It's not going to show up on this test. So why even bring that, you know, but it's up to you. Okay. So let's do a little review of what we did last time. this process, we started with this formula, and I'm not going to do this again, but we kind of work with it. We normally don't know this, so we have to use X bar. Where did X bar come from? A sample, so I can't use this. I've got to use this. I mean, so we went through the steps as to why, where we end up made sense. We started with something we knew. We all know this formula. That's just the z-score formula rewritten. So it's true. So if I modify it for a different situation, the result must still be true. Maybe, maybe. So what we ended up with is we get this formula. Can anybody tell me why there's a plus or minus in there? What is this? First off, let me say this. What's this formula supposed to find? What does it find? What does it create? Confidence. confidence interval. I love it. I don't know how I just said the confidence interval for the true mean. Population mean. I really want this to make sense. I take a sample. I get a mean. Is that the right mean? No. So by constructing this, I get a feel for how good my estimate is. So if one person made a, an interval seven to nine, can anybody tell me what the X bar must have been? You can do it, you can, you can do it, believe it or not. Where is X bar in the interval? It's always gotta be in the middle because I had to subtract from this, of course. What was X bar? Eight. Eight. And this other team gets this. What's the X bar? Eight. Is most right in the middle of 5, 11, 8. You guys with me? So they both got the same X bar. They both got 8. Which one was more certain about what they saw? The first one. First one. They could be we're like 7 to 9. These guys are like 5 to 11. Shit. We didn't do good. Maybe they didn't take a big enough sample. Uh, maybe they had a different level of confidence, which would sort of be cheating a little bit. Like these guys are 80% confident and these guys are 99% confident. That's not fair. 
I guess, see what I'm saying? A little bit. So if you, all right, all right. So that is one kind of higher level way of looking at confidence intervals. Okay. What if, uh, this is gonna come out today. Let me show you how we can use confidence intervals. If, if one group gets a confidence interval 11 to 17, and another group gets a confidence interval um, uh, 20 to 24, stay with me now. So they took samples from the same population, they took samples from the same population, and they got those two different confidence intervals. Why are they different? Because of course they would have gotten different X bars, stuff like that, right? So maybe these guys took it from the women and these guys took it from the men. Is this evidence that the women and men are different somehow? Is this evident that the true mean is different? You can do this. What does this one think the true mean is between? 11 and 17. We are such and such confident that this interval contains a true mean. These guys are confident that, the, that 20 to 24 contains the true mean. So does it look like there's evidence that the means are different? Yes, because they don't overlap. They don't agree anywhere. So if I took women's grades and men's grades and made confidence intervals and they didn't overlap, that is evidence that the mean grade for the two groups is different. Why is it not proof that they're different? You could do this. Like why? We could if we knew something, but we normally only know something. It's not proof because we're using just a freaking sample, right? Do you guys understand? So when you're doing a trial, is it possible to know everything? But still they come up with a verdict, right? And that verdict is based on within a reasonable doubt. That within a reasonable doubt is the plus or minus shit. So there's no way to know everything, but we can only, so we can, we can show evidence that two things are not equal to each other. This is evidence that the two means are not equal to each other. It's not proof because these are both based on samples. And these guys might have just happened to take some lower averages and these guys took higher ones just randomly. You never know. There's always a chance. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. All right, let me bring it back down. I'm sorry. It's really important that you get a feel for the bigger idea of these things so that when you're in the middle of little nuts and bolts, you know what this is going to lead to. And maybe some of the stuff you do makes more sense, is, is my hope. All right, let me come back to this. So this is constructing a confidence interval for the population. And again, we see a few different ways to use them but they're still based on sample information. So they are imperfect, which is, you can tell by us saying, I'm 95% confident. And what? <laughs> so normally you wouldn't hear somebody say that. They're like, which way should we go? We should go that way. But what's always inherent? I think we should go that way. There's some level of confidence I have in us needing to go that way. I could be wrong. Do we say that shit? No, especially if you're the leader, you're like, we go this way. And in your head, you're like, shit. <laughs> I hope to God we don't die. All right. Maybe. And that's why you make other people go in front of you. Now. <laughs> so let's do a... Um, so what has to be given to you? Uh, this has to be given to you. This has to be given to you. This you could actually be asked to make yourself using one bar stats. They can give you a list of data. You have to plug it in to get it, right? You guys with me? What about this? Where's this come from? Confidence interval, right? I didn't finish writing that word, did I? I kind of made it confidence interval. I like it. Anyway. If I'm 80% confident versus 95% confident, what does that affect in this formula? Z-score, I think is what you said, I don't know. Right? 
I don't know if that, it's just because I'm next to that fan or my ears are just going too. I love it. One eyeball, half an ear. All right. Wait, which ones are you in the game So they're going to have to tell you this guy. They're going to have to tell you how big the sample was, right? Or they could give you a list of data, right? So you have to count it yourself. Big deal. You can put it in one bar stats. So normally they give us this, this, and this. And this is we get from the confidence level. So let me just ask you this. What if I wanted to be 90% confident? And I know it's normal distribution. Can anybody tell me what the Z-score is for that? All right. Z score is not 0.9. Where is 0.9? To the right. What's the 90% confidence oh, interval do? What, how many sides are there to a confidence interval? Two. Oh. So this confidence interval, where's 90%? In the middle. In here. So how do you use the chart to figure out the Z scores that that defines? How do I use? Do I look up 0.9 in the chart at all? 5% on your side. Five percent. Yeah, point nine don't mean shit to that chart because the chart, the reason it's only one page, <laughs> is because they made it very single-minded. That chart only understands areas that are where below a z-score I want. Is point nine the total area below any z-score I want? No. This is what area is this? Yeah, it's ten percent outside, so five percent over here. So if you look up. 0.05, what do you get in the z-score chart? Hopefully you guys brought those. 1.645? Yeah, you get negative 1.645. Make sure you can do that. Remember I showed you the little baby chart too, it's down there. A the little baby chart. So then what must this side be? Do I even have to look anything up? What is this side? That's the same has been positive 1.645 because of symmetry. Later, we're going to have a picture that's not symmetric, so I am going to have to look up both sides. It's going to be a totally different distribution. That's all I'll say about it for right now. But I know this is 1.645. Does that make sense to everybody? It's zero in the middle, symmetric around that. So if one side's negative this, the other side's positive that. Holy shit. That's why the formula is plus or minus same z score, right? So plus 1.64 minus 1.64. So if I start at the mean, my best guess, and I go up and down so much, I catch, in this case, this much of the data. That's why I'd be 90% confident that I caught a certain thing, the real mean. So I want this to... Like an area? Totally. What's that chart? What's in the body of the chart? Areas. What's in the outside of the chart? Z-scores. So I can look either I know a Z-score and I look up the area, or I know an area and I look out to find the Z-score. 0.05, that looks like a Z-score, doesn't it? In fact, some people are going to look that up and give me a four-digit... Well, it is four-digit. Four. But like a probability for this. You're going to look at 0.05 as this. That's not a z-score, though, is it? It's an area. Do you see what I'm saying? You want to be nice to yourselves. How do you, like, remember that? Because it's 90%. 90% confidence in So whenever you're talking about what percentage is out here, that is a percentage. That's an area. It's not a z-score yet. If it was a z-score, why would I be doing any of it? I just put it in. But I need to figure out what the z-score is from that information. Okay, maybe. So let's do a let's do an example problem real quick. Um, so let's say that I have some data. I know that uh, n is forty-two. The mean is four point one eight. Standard deviation is known to be 0.99. And I want to find, construct the 90% confidence interval. I'm sorry, 90%. What have I been doing?
doing this morning? All right, so this is a typical problem. Not every problem is going to tell you as much as I have here. When you see this, construct a confidence interval, you know it's going to be one of the plus or minus formulas. We're going to learn two more of those today. So when it says construct a confidence interval, you're going to use one of the ones that's plus or minus. That's the whole idea behind a confidence interval. It's probably going to be the only one we know yet. So what is the only thing I don't directly know? Well, actually, I directly know everything because I purposefully picked this. They told me this. They told me this. They told me this. And we figured out what? Yeah, I know where to put what here. 1.645. Get gas. Because this is how much I want to go up and down from the mean. So normally, normally, most of the problems, the work you're going to do before you can use this is look up the z-score based on how confident they want you to be. That's the work you do. Plug it in, and then the rest of it is just plug and chuck. So what's this look like? What up here? 4.18. 4.18, give or take. 1.645. So for five times the old standard deviation divided by the square root of 42. Why, why do I know I'm allowed to do this at all? What has to be true and why is it true? Almost any time you hear that kind of question, it's the same thing. What's the thing that tells me I can make 90% do that and get 1.645. What kind of thing do I need to be able to use the z-score chart? What do I need? I need a what kind of distribution? Normal distribution, normal distribution right? Now why do I know this is normal? I didn't say it was normal. It's greater than 30. There you go. The sample size is bigger than 30 kick ass. Good old chicken lettuce tomato. I mean, central limit theorem, CLT. Shake the weekend cobwebs off. And so what I normally suggest you do is figure out what that piece is. I mean, remember what that was called? This is my best guess. Give or take how much I think I'm off by. This is called the error. Error. And so somebody help me out. What do you get when you do all that stuff? take this much. So this is the amount within 90% confidence. This is how far off I think that my best guess is. That's one way to kind of interpret this. So then you just subtract that from this and you get like 3.928. I don't know. That's totally made up. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Kick ass. All right. <laughs> and then 4.332. 432. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. And then your favorite part. Your favorite part. Let's see if you guys can remember. Can you write the conclusion to this? Did we do that yet? I'm pretty sure we did. And you're like, dude, that was Thursday. It's like forever. Alright, I'll get you started. We are far. We are 90% confident that nope. The interval. Good. Because remember the idea, this is this seems picky, 
and I'm a math teacher, so I'm kind of used to that, but this is more than just picky. This, the, the mean doesn't fall somewhere. It is somewhere. What changes? If I went and took another confidence interval, would it be the same as this? No. I get a different mean, I get a different n maybe, whatever. So there's a 90% chance that our interval catches the real mean. We are 90% confident that the interval, where do you go? 3.928 to 4.432 contains the true mean. So you gotta have units. Yeah, normally I have units. Yeah, I just didn't feel like doing it. Just doing some nuts and bolts right now. So if this was like uh, pounds of sugar used or something, then I would say the interval of this many pounds to this many pounds contains a true mean pounds of sugar used. You have to put the reality of the situation in your answer, of course. What's the result? Seven. What? Seven what? <laughs> How long will it take you to do this? Eleven. 11 months? 11, what? <laughs> so, I will be a complete dork, as I am, just am. And I will put down a guess as to what you mean if you don't put units, and then take points off. Because you made me be a dork. Got to take points off. Okay. Did we finish that handout? Let me see. Here. You guys still have this handout? Yeah. We still need to do the bottom because I haven't talked about it yet, so I'm about to talk about the bottom. But I'm pretty sure we, did we do the top. Huh? Everybody got this one. No, we all got it. Y'all got it. Okay. Who else still needs it? Somebody wasn't here last time. It's the one that's got confidence intervals for mean and proportion. Section 8183. Oh, good. So we haven't done this at all. Okay, beautiful. So do number one. Anybody else still need it? Can't find it? Everybody's got it? Anybody need calculator? 